Good afternoon and welcome to Paul T's World. In this video we'll be looking at the front garden, the flowers and the shrubs that are in flower in early August. I try to keep this bed for the ericaceous plants. I know there's a laurel there on the right hand side, it actually grew as a weed. I've left it for the time being because it gives height to the garden, but at some stage I might change it for a prettier shrub. But mainly in this bed I've got hydrangeas and rhododendrons. When the bed is all ericaceous it's easy then to both feed, water and mulch. This is a mop head hydrangea that I had in a pot for a few years, then once it got quite large I've put it in this bed. It's deciduous so it loses its leaves in autumn and then fresh new growth appears each spring. I won't deadhead this until the early spring when it starts to send up its new growth. This is a small rhododendron that I also transplanted from a pot. It's really important to water rhododendrons and azaleas and camellias really well in August and September. That is when they are forming their new flower buds for next year. This is the Hydrangea paniculata, first one I've ever had. It's rather different from other hydrangeas in that it starts off from white, goes through to cream and then ends up pink. With most hydrangeas you leave the heads on through the winter, but with this one I'm going to actually deadhead it as the blooms fade, because there's a chance that more blooms will come through. So I'm going to experiment this year. Let's move across the lawn now and see one of the white mop head hydrangeas. I was given this by a friend a few years ago. At the time it had just one head like this and about two or three leaves and within a few years it's grown up to this. Next to the hydrangea is a penstemon and it will flower right through till the first frosts, particularly if you deadhead the stems as they finish flowering. Now penstemons are rather short-lived perennials and this one's been in the ground for almost 20 years so I think I could probably do with replacing it. This is a dark purple buddleia. I planted it purely for the butterflies and the bees. It can get straggly but just cut it back as you like. If you cut the main flower heads off when they've finished flowering you will get a second flush of slightly smaller flower heads. I really enjoy sitting next to the buddleia on a calm summer's day watching the bees and the butterflies. Moving along this border at the side of the front garden we pass by the deciduous azalea which flowered so beautifully in spring. I like this mob head hydrangea and that is because we have some blue petals down here, some blue ones here and then it goes into pink. Now normally a hydrangea will be pink when the soil is rather alkaline and then blue like this when it's acidic but this gorgeous hydrangea is both and I just love that. Every year it's like this. Uh, one of my favourite ones. I do prefer the lace cap, but because of the pink and blue I really like this.
Do you think I've pruned this Philadelphus back a little bit too much this year? <laughs> I got a little carried away. Actually, all will be revealed in a future video. This is really a spring flowering bed. However, there's the red robin, which was a bit leggy early on in the year, so I decided to take a few feet off the top and it has responded by producing these lovely red leaves. And as the season progresses, I'll prune the lower parts of this bush so that it will then continue to produce nice red leaves throughout the remaining part of the season. In front of the red robin, we've got some sedum. I like this sedum spectabile because it is one of the latest flowering plants in the garden. So the bees and the butterflies have plenty of nectar late on in the season. The contorted hazel is doing very well. It's put on a lot of growth this year. And along with the Crimson King maple behind it, it gives a little bit of a woodland feel. So there's plenty of dappled shade and sunlight. The speckled wood butterfly loves this particular type of habitat. And it often sits in the dappled sunlight on this particular shrub. Moving past the Pyrrhus, the Rhododendrons, the Magnolias, we come to a little hydrangea. It's a mophead hydrangea and I have totally and utterly neglected this hydrangea. I haven't fed it, I haven't actually watered it separately. All I've done with it is deadhead it in the spring. So what I'm going to do this autumn is move it into one of the ericaceous beds. So let's see how it does. It's actually got quite a pretty flower. The blue geranium is still flowering and still looking good, but in another week those flowers will have started to fade and I'm going to cut the whole plant right back to the ground. It'll grow again and flower again this season. I like the way that it actually will grow through some of the other shrubs and here it is growing through the rhododendron. This is the Eucalyptus gunnii that I featured in one of the spring videos. So I want to show you how it's doing after I pruned it back in early spring. So I'll show you a short excerpt of what it looked like in early spring. To remind me of my travels in Australia, I put in this Eucalyptus uh, gunnii. And <laughs> it shot up. <laughs> It got up about 20 or 30 feet and I thought, well actually I want it to be bushy further down. Although I did want to fill this gap here, uh, but it got too high. So I've just literally cut it off and I'm hoping it's going to sprout round here. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Well now we can see what happened and it sprouted beautifully exactly as I wanted. Let's move over to the pathway that leads from the parking area up to the front door. There's the Ceanothus on the right hand side that flowered in the spring, the lavender hedge, And what I'm going to do with this lavender hedge is I'm going to prune it back when the bees and the butterflies have stopped visiting. That tells me that the flowers are over. And that will in fact be in the next week or two.
As I've mentioned in other videos, this lavender hedge self-seeds in the path. Here we can see some of the seeds that have started to drop on the path and indeed some of the seeds are producing seedlings. Here are another three ready to pot up. As I've mentioned before, they are growing in sand. They send quite a long route down looking for moisture. Here are some of last year's seedlings that I potted up late last year. It's quite handy to have these plants because lavender are quite short-lived and it's sometimes difficult to stop them getting woody so they need to be replaced. And in fact, over the last few years this hedge has slowly been replaced one at a time. This is my favourite hydrangea and I'll tell you why. I took a cutting of the hydrangea which is on the patio and this is it. After a few years, I can't remember how many years it is, maybe four or five, I'm not quite sure. But what's really nice about this hydrangea is that it's pink all over. Now with the other hydrangea, I quite like the fact that it was blue and pink. And now we've got one that's uniform pink and I love that as well. It's a lace cap which probably is my favourite. Beautiful. At the top of the path, there's a small dahlia. The Eryngium. Now what's that nice about, oh, I mustn't touch it really because it's full of bees, bumblebees and honeybees. I could sit here all day and watch the bumblebees on these plants. Next to the dahlia is a fuchsia. Now I haven't really done much with this fuchsia, but it flowers all summer from really early in the spring and it flowers really well. However, this coming spring, I'm going to prune it back. I've read that you can cut back fuchsia quite a long way. And that's what I want to do now to really bush it up, encourage new growth and get even more flowers. As you've seen with that Philadelphus, once I get pruning something, it really gets pruned. Moving over to the two climbing roses, we have the Dancing Queen. Here it has already had its first flush of flowers that I deadheaded more or less in one go. So I'm going to have a complete new flush of flowers in the next week. Next to the Dancing Queen is Golden Showers and these stems were cut right the way back after its first flush and here they are grown two or three feet for its second flush. Hopefully both the climbing roses will have their best flowering and second flush at the same time. Next to the Privet Hedge and in front of the large Escalonia is another hydrangea. This is a nice hydrangea, Macrophilia hydrangea lace cap. It's called Zorro. It's pink, 
here in this alkaline soil, unusual for the garden, it's alkaline. As you can see, the stems here are rather dark. So when you prune it, the new fresh stems are dark. It's quite nice. Now this hydrangea is not fussy. It will grow in any soil. Uh, it dappled shade, part shade and full sun. The ideal hydrangea.